Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. What's up, y'all? We back. It's the boy Lito Takeover, man. It's the Takeover Files. We have a very special episode. I'm going to just let this rock. Tell y'all what's going on. It's your boy Little Takeover, man. We back with the Takeover Files. We have a special, exclusive guest. We have a legend. This is deeper than a guest, man. Uh, it's, it's so much I can say about this, man, but I'm going to start off by saying I appreciate you, legend, the one and only, Ryan Toby. What's going on, brother? <laughs> what's happening with you, family? Uh, man, I, I'm, I'm happy to get you on, man. I'm doing good. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say real quick, man, over 20 million albums sold, you know, collectively with multiple uh, uh, multiple of records with uh, City High. He's wrote for artists such as LL Cool J, Barry J. Blige, Lionel Richie, uh, shoot, Caught Up, Superstar from Usher. Yeah, that's him. That actor, singer, songwriter, producer, and content creator from World of Borough, New Jersey, Mr. Ryan Taylor. <laughs> Glad to formally introduce you, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. It's more like 60 million, so world, it's a worldwide. <laughs> hey, 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 talk. Let them know. And hey, count. <laughs> hey man, first I want to say, you know, um, you know, just just watching up, you know, we first saw you in Sister Act, and, and that's where that's where a lot of us re realized your talent, your voice, you know, hitting that note, the the old happy days, you know, such a, a monumental uh, moment in our culture, you know. Thank so you, uh, I want to start off by asking, um, how did you get that role? Oh man, I had a, I auditioned for that role. Um, man, I was. What, 15 years old, I think, 16 years old, I auditioned for that role up and I went to New York. And uh, that was the first thing I ever auditioned for in my life. I've never been on an audition before. First thing I ever went out for, ever, ever, ever. And God <laughs> blessed me with the part I booked it. <laughs> so what made you like audition? Did you, you know, want to start acting or was it like- Nah, nah, not at all. It's a funny story. I was trying to get a record deal. I was just a young, young boy from Jersey. Um, I was working with my first manager at the time, a guy named Marvin Thompson, and he was taking me like to record labels, taking me to New York, having me sing at the Apollo, having me sing in different contests and stuff like that. And um, we were doing some work with this A&R at RCA Records at the time, this guy named Kenny Ortiz. Um, and he was the dude that discovered SWV. He was the guy that uh, discovered the Neptunes, you know what I mean? The very young Pharrell, young mm. SWV. So... I was like, you know, gonna be another one of his young upcoming artists and acts. And um, so he was developing me at the time. And um, Kenny was the one and, and my manager, I don't know how they found out about these auditions for uh, for Sister Act 2, but they wanted me to go try out for it. And I was really only trying out to be in the choir. They, 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 that role that I ended up playing in the movie wasn't even in the script. Wow. <laughs> They yeah, created that role for me. Like once I booked that, like they created that role for me. I was just supposed to be one of the kids in the background. Yo, that's that's dope. That's a blessing. That that shows you, you know, that you know, that that it, the story's written already. You know, regardless yeah. of what what we think we're doing, what we want to achieve, it's yeah. written. And sometimes, you know, we we have to take a leap of faith, and it will literally take us the complete opposite direction. Uh, what we wanted to do, but Yo, it, that happened my whole career. That's my yeah. whole career. I got I got in the game to be like you know, the solo singing male R&B dude. I was trying to be Tevin Campbell, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Weaver, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and and I, I I did everything in the game but that. It was crazy. I was trying to get a record deal. I landed a movie. Trying to get a record deal. I ended up writing for Will Smith, one of his biggest records. Oh, yeah. trying, to get a record deal, trying to get a solo deal. I ended up landing in a group that was Grammy nominated and toured the world. Trying to get a record deal. Still trying to get a record deal. I ended up writing for Usher. Still trying to get a record deal, and I ended up, you know, what I mean, writing room for Mary J. Blige and Lionel Richie and all these other people. So, I am I'm a living testimony of like, yo, you gotta just keep your options open, like you said, take the leap of faith. You never know where you're gonna land. That's why, like, real talk, I ain't 
that's why I'm just now putting out solo albums at, at age 43. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, I say, cause the, the, uh, the, the songs for the lockdown series, I, we want to touch on that a little later. Yeah, 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 but, yeah, yeah. yo, I, I, lo I love it. Uh, you, you, Thank that, you, man. We, let's, let's get back real quick. Let's get back. Cause you, yeah. start answering, you answer my questions before I can get to the questions. So. <laughs> I've, been so doing interview, I've been doing interviews for like the last three, three four months straight. So like these, uh, these questions, yeah, they are <laughs> Man, and that's that's the hard thing, you know, when you're on like the press runs, you know, trying yeah. to find out, you know, about you that things that you haven't necessarily, you know, yeah. gave out to the people, man. But yeah. oh, it, it's it's just a few questions that I definitely got to ask because on Absolutely. that cast, this our last touch on Sister Act Two, but on that yeah. cast, man, you got to work with Whoopi Goldberg, Lauren Hill, yeah. you know, how yeah. was that? experiences as a what 16 year old 15 year old yeah. it was amazing i mean you gotta think whoopi goldberg guy has what's that award called the e got this like an emmy a grammy a oscar, oscar. And a you know what i mean so um i mean working with her i mean she's the goat she's the queen like i was working with a real live legend and didn't even really know it like i said this was the first thing i ever auditioned for i ain't had right, no, right. no experience i ain't had no point of reference i'm just a little nigga from Mullenboro, you know, from Jersey. <laughs> right, right. Okay, right. so like, I'm I'm in LA for the first time. I'm in Hollywood for the first time. I mean, hanging out at her crib, out in the Palisades, like all this was mind blowing to me, bro. It was mind blowing. And then to watch her work, watch her professionalism, um, the way she, you know, she cared about the other actors, she cared about the kids, she was making sure they was treating us right. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And um, it was just a beautiful experience for me. It was so surreal. And then. You know, working with Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill was new, but I mean, Lauren, you just knew she was gonna be a star. Yeah, some people she, just I had mean, it. It's, oh my God, she she. I mean, she was only eighteen years old, but light years ahead. Just light years ahead. Anytime she opened her mouth to speak, anytime she opened her mouth to rap, sing, you just like yo. Y'all knew this it. girl. About, yeah, she about to be out of here. And <laughs> sure enough, she was out of here. <laughs> Right, right after that, <laughs> it's crazy. Right? And, and look, I see that you had another stint in acting. Uh, excuse my ignorance if I'm, I'm missing out other uh, other movies, but uh, Prison Song, you had a cameo. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's one of my favorite movies. And I'm it's crazy because before we got the interview, I was watching Prison Song on a plane to Vegas. So I'm like, I'm looking like, hold on, oh, he's <laughs> oh, right, oh, so, so, so was that was that time period in your life after Sister Act Two? Did you? feel like acting was your destiny or at least part of the path? Um nah, honestly, I was still on my on, on, on my on my on my heavy, heavy mission to get a fucking record deal. Right, like I right, wanted right. music was always my first love. Mm -hmm. I kinda like stumbled into the acting thing. Now don't get me wrong, didn't take it for granted, mm -hmm. but it, it wasn't like my first first passion like that. I yeah. always wanted to like make videos make albums, I wanted to be on tour. I wanted to, I, you know, I grew up in the Michael Jackson era, Prince right, era, so right. for me, there was nothing bigger than that, you know what I mean? Um, but obviously, you know, I got I had manager, I had an agent at that time, by that point, so they like, yo, you gotta go on more auditions, you gotta do more acting, you gotta do more acting. So I was just doing more auditions, I landed like a couple little small things, I landed uh, like an Adidas commercial, I think, at one okay. point, and then, um, I, I was getting a bunch of like offers to do like a lot of uh, off Broadway stuff, mm -hmm. uh, some Broadway stuff, and so I was doing that. That was fun. And then yeah, then I landed this one, you know, little cameo in, in Prison Song, um, and I honestly forgot about it to be, to be real <laughs> with you. When it came on Netflix and people started hitting me, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, that's right, I was in that movie because it was so fast. I think yeah. I was only there for like maybe half a day. In a group home when he when he first got to the group home. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't even really know the, the, the impact that that movie was going to have. Because, you know, when, when I auditioned for it, my agent was like, yeah, you got you, you got this part. You know, you're just supposed to play like a guidance counselor or whatever, school counselor, student counselor, whatever it was. And um, and I was like, oh, she's like, yeah, with Q-Tip and Mary J. Blige. And I was like, oh, Man, really? That joke. <laughs> yeah, but I ain't, I ain't even really, you know what I mean? Think about it. I just showed up to work. I just figured I was just going to work. I ain't right. know the movie was going to be that hard. You know what I'm saying? So, Yo. One one of the most underrated movies I feel yeah, like ever exactly, of exactly. the nineties. Definitely one of the most underrated movies, man. Exactly. So let let's get to this music, man. Um, so real quick, I know on your search for a a, a deal, you have problems on your journey. You know, um, a lot of A and R's or, or or business or companies labels didn't want artists that sing and rap. Yeah, 
how, so so tell me a little bit about that process and that journey. Yeah, man. I mean, the irony of it is like, dang, you know, twenty years later, it's like you know, you fast forward and <laughs> that's what everybody you does. Can't get a record deal now. <laughs> you can't sing it back. But um, I don't know. It was just the times. Like you know, singers were singers and rappers were rappers, and there was like clear lines back then. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 at least in my case, so you know, when I was making these songs, I was signed to Jazzy Jeff uh, Company, a touch of jazz at the time. Uh -huh. And we was making these songs and like people would just be so shocked, like, yo, you rap like that? And then then the hook would come on and I'm really singing the hook and they like, damn, you you sing like that? And right. I was, I'm thinking it's normal. I'm just thinking that's what you do, right? Yeah. And um, it was like, nah, like a lot of people didn't do that. And a lot of record labels were not necessarily in the market for that. They felt like it was too confusing. They felt like you need, you know, pick a lane, pick a lane, pick a lane, pick a lane. Where, you know, nowadays the game is way more wide open. It, exactly. you, it, and really just the world right now with social media. And they, like, they, your grandma could have a cooking show right now on her Instagram. Like, you know what I'm saying? And like, it'd be popping because my grandma go down. popping. Yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> grandma. <laughs> grandma on the gram. Listen. <laughs> it'd be so lit. You know what I mean? Right. So, like, you know, anybody can have a podcast. Anybody can, you know what I mean? And you can do a little bit of everything. You know, you can have a podcast, drop an album, you know, have a, have a, have a cooking show with it all at the same time. Whereas, like, back then, you know how it was. Actors was actors. Rappers was rappers. Everybody had a lane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man. So, speaking of that, you know, your days with Jazzy Jeff, man, you came across. I know. I see you got a, a real dope Philly connection. With our city, because you know, you, you and you came in that era with uh, what the Jill Scotts, the music yeah. soul ties, and the flow through. Did y'all ever like cross paths as far as in studios or Absolutely. you had to Absolutely. That's 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 about that's, that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's how we met. You know, Jazzy mm. Jeff's Jazzy Jeff's studio was the um, it was it was our college, it was it was it was the university, the music mm. university, you know, it's a music industry university. And like, I mean, Jeff's studio was that hub where just so much young talent was coming through, writers, producers, uh, artists, you know what I mean? All the people you named uh, they, uh, when they was very young, you know what I mean? Damn, so, yeah, from, from that Jersey, Willingboro, Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? Willingboro, Philadelphia. <laughs> Philadelphia connection is what it is, man. Absolutely. So, yeah, we would see each other in the studio all the time, writing, you know, singing backgrounds on each other's songs, and yo, come in this room when you're done over here, come in here, come here when I'm listening to you, listen to what they done, and you, oh shit, I gotta go back in the other room. Jeff had like four or five rooms popping. What? How, four, how four, four, get, no third street was off the chain. Huh? How did y'all two get connected? Uh, that was through, that was through actually an uh, um, ex-girlfriend of mine. Okay. Uh, I ran into her, I came back, I was in Jersey, I was in the city, no, I was in Philly, and she and I reconnected. She was a singer, and she was signed to Jeff at the time. Her name okay. was Tia. And, uh, and she was like, I went to the studio. I heard she was like, yeah, I'm about to go to the studio. I'm like, oh, word? I was like, well, what are you working at? She's like, oh, Jazzy Jeff, da, 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 da. She's like, you should come with me. So I went down there with her, and uh, she introduced me to Jeff and to the uh -huh. guy. Like that, yeah. Look at God. God is good. Huh? It's crazy how people could be placed in life at one moment and then uh -huh. come back and be that exact, like, fit to the puzzle. Absolutely. And it's crazy, Absolutely. man. So, um, all right, man, and I know I'm trying to go up the timeline because I definitely want to tell the story. So, um, a little bit after that now, Will Smith, you know, Men in Black drop, yeah. does numbers, that's crazy. And then Will decides to drop an album. Yeah, he wanted to do and a comeback album. A comeback album, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we can't forget about the summer times and all. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and Jazzy Jeff plays from your music, and he loves it. Mm -hmm. What was that feeling like? I hated it. Really? <laughs> yeah. What? What was that? Because you got to remember, like I said, I you got into the game. Art. I was trying to get my fucking record deal. Mm. So all these other opportunities. So when I got, you know, it's like my manager is calling me talking about, yo, you got an audition for a movie. Now, mind you, bro, I'm, I was young. I was new to this. This is a different time. This ain't uh -huh. like nowadays <laughs> now. where everybody is trying to do everything now. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? We in a time where they, you pick your lane, you're going for your thing, and that's right. Niggas that play football, play football. Tunnel vision. You know I mean? That was that the tunnel vision era. Right? <laughs> All right, right. So, 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 so I was trying to get a record deal, and it's like my manager, imagine your manager calling me, like, yo, you got this movie audition. And I'm like, 
movie audition. Like, what's up with my record deal? I thought we mm -hmm. supposed to be doing it. And I was just very young. I was just very yeah. young and naive, okay? Mm -hmm. So I had, it was a lot I had to learn in this business. I had to learn about keeping options open. I had to learn about where God closes one door, he opens another mm -hmm. window. Yeah. I had to learn all of those things. So I remember, and Jeff was one of the big, biggest, uh, biggest, biggest, Teacher, that, yeah, he, he, he taught me. He taught me like, yo, you can have a career being a songwriter writing for other people. I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't have no point of reference with that. So, so I remember Jeff called me like, yo, Will came down to the studio. He about to he he about to go back in and make a new album. I played him some of your joints, and I was at that age, I was at that age too where and I and I it's funny because as I got older. And uh -huh. then I knew the game. Now I know the game. I would always work with young artists, and they would be doing this, making the same mistake that I made. You know what I mean? My songs, I ain't giving mm -hmm. them, you know, my music and my art and my, and an my, opportunity. my career and my, 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 you know? You're so young, and you don't know that, you know, your gift is, is like it's meant to be given. You know what I mean? You're not mm -hmm. supposed to hoard it and hold it, and, you know what I mean? My songs and my this and that. So, but at that time, I was green to the game. So, I was like, damn, man, what you mean you playing on my songs? Da, 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 da. I, I didn't, I could care less that it was. <laughs> and, and, and you got to remember, too, take this into account. Uh, we talking about 97, 98. Yep. At this time, Jay-Z is on fire. Mm -hmm. Snoop Dogg is on fire. Cash Money is on fire. Puff Daddy and the Family is on fire. Right. Rap was in a whole nother place. So mm -hmm. you talk about some Fresh Prince? I'm like... Yeah, a little bouncy music. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> now, we a long time after Summertime and yeah. Paris just... Uh, J Will ain't made an album in 10 years. He the, he the goofy dude, right? He was on right. Fresh Prince Bel Air. He was the goofy boy. So you come to me talking about, yo, he want to cut your songs. I'm like... No. Nah. I'm, I'm banging Rockefeller in the car right now. We right, right. Bad Boy, Rockefeller... You know what I mean? Wu Tang, Nas, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. trying to, come on, like, so, so my mind wasn't even in that place to want to give Dumb. Will Smith no songs. You feel now, what I mean? Now, you looking at it like you had to, because just like you said, what you were listening to, what was hot at the time, did you feel like it was necessarily? I don't want to. And, and no disrespect to Will, that's the legend. Yeah, no, you not at like all. You had not to dumb your lyrics down and nah, turn it up. Just like, here's the thing. Once again valuable valuable lesson needed to be learned mm -hmm. like it's like bro you you in, you you've got an opportunity to be in the room with one of the greatest of all time this man is the first rapper to ever win a grammy at the scratch of his surface too you know what i'm saying like like will smith and jazzy jeff like they was the shit will smith is was a rapping ass dude bro like no game so it was just young, man, and, and I would advise, man, or, you know, listeners out there, any of the young artists, that's why it's important, you know what I mean? Like, you know how young boys just have that cocky mentality, mm -hmm. like, oh, you just old ass nigga, da 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 da, -da. Like, bro, you gonna blow opportunities like that? Humble mm -hmm. yourself. You have mm -hmm. to pay homage to the kings that came before you. And I thank God, I thank God, I thank God every day that, you know, Jazzy Jeff, like, was like, nigga, like, listen to me. Like, you can make money, writing for other people you're a writer you know what i mean mm -hmm. don't be afraid to let those songs go like don't be afraid, you know what i mean and it was like i i just didn't see when i sit back now obviously i'm older and mm -hmm. i'm like damn like i was really about to like not work with will smith <laughs> <laughs> because because crazy. on some on some on some like rap shit you know what uh -huh. i'm saying like you know how it is like battle rappers don't fuck with radio rappers yeah, yeah. you know how that go you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, real rappy, lyrical, lyrical niggas, they don't fuck with the Migos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? No, you're that, right. You're hitting it on the head. Right? So, the so, head. so, so, so at that time, it was very, you know, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I think Nas, I think Nas wrote Men in Black. Wow. I didn't know that. Wow. I think, I think Nas wrote for it because I know once I did get on board and Will brought me on the team and I started writing for him, when he, we would be in New York and we had the hit factory and he got like, they got like two rooms, track masters had like two rooms blocked out. Mm -hmm. I would be in one room working on a track and Nas would be in the other room working on a track for work. Mm -hmm. He would be writing. So imagine that. Like right. I had that, this was the lesson. It's like, yo, 
if Nas is in here, right? And Nas ain't never did no shit like that before. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know what I mean? The game was changing where it was like, oh, yo, like that ghostwriting and all that. That's mm -hmm. what it's like, you know, Yeah, bro. Like, if you one of them, like, super sick-ass battle rapping niggas, you better go find one of these lollipop niggas hey. and write one of them rappers <laughs> and get paid. Hey, hey, you heard what Diddy said. When I heard Diddy say, I don't write rhymes, I write checks. Oh, he took yeah. off life to a whole new level. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, but I my cousin rapper, he about to write this for me. And peek this. <laughs> peek this. Diddy said that two, three years after. Later. I was, mm -hmm. so, so you see what I'm saying? World. Are you breaking up on me? Like the world was different. The game, the, the game was different. You got me now? Mm. No. Yep, yep, I got you. I, I, heard, I heard you. No, you all good. You all you good, me? man. Yes. All right, so uh, yeah. So um, all right. So let's, yeah, nah, let's, let's move a little bit past. Yeah. Right, so I do want to ask: Do you have a favorite Will Smith uh, moment when y'all went on tour and when you hit LA and New York and all that? Let me uh. Let me charge my phone. My jump about to die. You see my angle crazy. I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, man. It was. I mean, with Will, what was what was dope? I mean, that was the first time I ever flew on a private jet. You know what I mean? Um, I know a lot of laughs. A lot of laughs. Yeah, yeah. Hanging out with him and 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 his pretty new girlfriend Jada Pinkett. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like. Staying at the crib and all that, and then it was it was it was crazy because this was during that time when Snoop I think had left Death Row. Um, he was beefing with Death Row. So oh, like, when he was went to No Limit. Yeah, so like me and Will, we went to go to the studio to work with Warren G in L.A. and Snoop pulled up in the bulletproof minivan. Snoop was riding around in a bulletproof minivan, <laughs> and I just thought that was wild, like. I was like, damn, is it that real? Right. Was right. Like, yeah, that shit is like really, really real. Like, it's not only is it like a minivan to stay low key. It's bulletproof. And that shit bulletproof. <laughs> what? a hey, Snoop got bring that back. Oh, he probably still got it in the tux. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, that's, that's dope, man. You've been able to touch so many uh, different eras. You know, yeah. and then being around so much great. I mean, you're a legend yourself, and, and just you, just acknowledging, knowing your legendary status, and hearing your story, and seeing that you were surrounded by a bunch of influential people, and you weren't a naive kid. You know, like you say, yeah. you listened to Jazzy Jeff. You you took in advice. You were able to, you know, uh, uh, take in people's energy and and write great music. Now Thank let's you, go. Let, let no problem, man. No problem. Um, now. You did vocals with Whitney Houston on, on a Whitney oh, Houston track when you met yeah, my yeah, not, yeah, yeah. That was just, I just did, um, I just sang some backgrounds on that My Love Is Your Love joint when Clef was working on that. That was like the night actually that I decided, well, well it was Y Clef's idea that me and um, Robbie, the other guy in the group of City High, that was, it was that night that Clef was like, yo, y'all niggas should be a group. Because originally, Robbie was signed to Clef as a solo artist, and I was just writing for him. I was just writing songs for him. He was Did they have out. a publishing deal yet? Who, me? Yeah. No, nah, no. Nah. Oh, okay, so okay. I had worked with Will Smith, but the album hadn't come out yet. Okay. So, so I didn't know what was really going to happen, if the album was going to break, if niggas mm -hmm. was going to look at Will like, um, you know, Will, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> So, um, and, and I had, I was writing for Robbie. Robbie was signed to Y Clef and Robbie was working on his solo album. So I was writing some songs for him. So one night Robbie was like, yo, I got to go to the city. Um, Clef is, uh, working on this Whitney Houston song. He want me to come up there and like sing some backgrounds and stuff, whatever. He was like, you should come with me. So I was like, all right, cool. And I already knew Y Clef through Lauren Hill from, right. you know, back in the day. So I'll go around. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. Just like you said. So it's like, I come in the studio Soon as Clef saw me, he like, oh, stop bro. You know what I'm saying? He like, bro, oh man, da 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 da. Yo, this kid is crazy. This kid can rap his ass off. Blah 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 blah. So he's just like, you know, what you doing now? I'm like, oh man, I'm signing to Jeff down in Philly. I just finished working with Will. Blah 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 blah. And they like, oh man, nigga, we just got our new label deal with Interscope. And, uh. He was like, yo, you should come fuck with us. He like, when is your contract up? And I'm like. <laughs> I'm like my card and my contract was actually about to be up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Perfect so time. he was like, yo, when your contract is up, you should come, you should come over here and fuck with us. And I was like, okay. He was like, matter of fact, y'all two niggas should be a group. He was like, cause I hear the songs you've been writing for Robbie and I like y'all vibe. 
he was like, y'all should be a group, like on some Casey and JoJo shit. Uh -huh. So I was like, I was like, all right, whatever, we'll be, we'll, you know, we talked about it, talked about it. I was like, ah, man, you know, whatever, that ain't what I really wanted to do. But once again, I'm in one of them scenarios nah, where it's like, <laughs> do I listen? Do I take the opportunity? So I took the opportunity. And um, yeah, and that night he was like, he's like, yo, you want to jump on this Whitney joint? And I was like, what you need me to do? He's like, I don't know. Just give me some harmony, some backgrounds. And then he just was like, yo, just give, gave me a track and just let me just sing. I just did like some ad libs and some shit in the background. That's, and that's like, a blessing. That's, yeah. And even even that moment in itself, like it's so much that that happened. And it's like that that one moment. First off, I want to say you were like clearly wingman of the year. <laughs> Ladies told you to rock with you. You came. You, I'm about to ask you to come somewhere with me so we can see if some magic happened, bro. But, wait, no. wait, hold on. You said what? <laughs> bro, I said we about to we about to go take a trip to one of my meetings because you the wingman of the year. What? Wingman yeah. of the year. <laughs> Roddy came. Yeah. He said, "Look, now y'all plugged in with Watt Clef. You got plugged yeah. in with Jazz for the first one, yeah. so I'm yeah. gonna have to call you. So we're gonna go to one of my meetings." Right. Absolutely, absolutely. No, <laughs> and, um, so, so at what point did uh Claudette get get uh into the group? She came in the group. Uh, well, me and Robbie started recording a bunch of songs. We was originally City High was just me and him, and um and then she was coming through the studio. So excuse me we would have her just singing on hooks and stuff like that. She was in this girl group uh, in the city where in Willenboro, she used to be in this female group. And hey, so she would come, girl. yeah, we all are. Dope, dope. Yeah, yeah. So so she, she would come through and sing on different songs or whatever. And one of the songs that we had her sing the hook on was the What Would You Do joint. And um, when we played it for Wyclef, he was like, yo, who is that on the chorus? And we're like, oh, she didn't have a verse now that I think hook. about it, right? Nah, she just sang the hook. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so when Clef heard her on the joint, he was like, "Yo, who is that? I got, I got to meet her, or whatever." So we brought her to the studio. They saw her, you know what I mean? They like, oh, she dropped in gorgeous. They was like, "Yo, she got to be in the group." <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and he was like, "What? Why want no girl in the group?" And he was like, "Nah, I'm telling you, man, y'all niggas could be some Fuji's type shit." So we went from being Casey and Jojo, now, now we got the next Fuji's. You know what I mean? So you That's see what I'm saying? It was like the universe. All I know is adjust. Right. <laughs> it's like right, right. Adjust, 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 adjust. You have to know how to adjust, how to roll with the punches, brother. That's the main lesson I learned in life. So, all right. So, what what happened with uh, with City High? You know, y'all had a nice rhyme. Y'all dropped the two albums. Um, yeah. The first one, the first one slap. I ain't go, the first one slap. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't re remember too much of the second one. You know, we keep it real on the files. We never put it out. We never put the second one out. Y'all never put it? The group, so it wasn't an unreleased version of it? Uh-uh, the group broke up before the album came out. So you mind talking about what happened, or you don't want to touch on that? I mean, me and Claudette started dating, and she got pregnant. <laughs> 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 and so it was like the group was over. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all right, real quick. Because look, because you got to remember, because you got to remember, it, it's not like now where it's cool for... Cardi B to be pregnant and still have a career. Mm. Uh, you know, Beyonce can be pregnant and still have a career. You know what I'm saying? Back then, females, once you got pregnant, it was like, it's that old. was it. You ever noticed, like, Beyonce, you ain't never even hear about her dating nobody till her career was way deep into her career. You ain't right. hear about Brandy messing with nobody. Brandy ain't had no baby till way later in her career. Monica mm -hmm. ain't get pregnant and had no baby till way late. Like That's that wasn't was way back then. Uh, you you ain't even hear about Janet Jackson having no babies or none of that. Whitney Houston, yeah. nobody. Like so back then, in the nineties, late nineties, two thousands, early two thousand, all that. As a female artist, once you got pregnant, that shit was like, it was sad. It's sad that it's like that. I'm glad now. Like we live in an era where you know Tiana Taylor, she get pregnant and everybody. Like, oh, and it's a part of her story and she can she can play off of her pregnancy and still have a career. We right. live in a new day now. So I'm really happy for the ladies that they 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 get in more room to really be women and, and be who they really are and, and, and have be mothers and all of that. You know what I'm saying? It was harder back then, dog. It was hard. Yeah. And so I feel once, like Yeah. No, yeah. I'm saying, I, I was just gonna say, and I feel like, you know, a big a big thing, I, a big reason I feel like uh pregnancies are accepted now. And it's weird because I feel like it's because of the social media. You know, women can tell their story through their posts and their social media where before, yeah. you know, 
uh, the industry, you guys had to rely on tabloids and magazines yeah. and they and, and, and you know what? In social media, you're allowed to be yourself. Right. You know what else? We, we live in an era now. We live in the era of reality TV. So mm -hmm. people want the real. People want the real story. People want, you know what I mean? Whereas back in the day, nobody you knew what was going got. on in Ashanti's life. Nobody knew what was right. going on in Beyonce. Like, that was off limits. Back in the day, it was like you was only the artist. You had to smile. Mm. You had to be pretty for the camera. You had to be perfect all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, you could be on your gram snapping with no makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> and and that, that goes back to what we were talking about as far as, you know, uh, uh, being like marginalized or, or being yeah. uh, in one lane back yes, then. And right. it's crazy. Exactly. Because social media is just a blessing and a curse. A curse yeah. and a blessing. Because yeah, a lot absolutely. of blessings come, come after the curses of social media. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Hey, the whole world is different now. The whole game has changed, brother. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, so real quick. All right. So after I say real quick a lot and it don't be quick. But um <laughs> <laughs> So all right, so um after after, you know, City High. Yeah. How did you go from you know from from you know top of the world touring and everything? And then it was like no group. What a baby. Yeah. What, or no what's, no, what's no, so, so the group was breaking down. Uh we had a lot of inner turmoil and then um we was working on the second album, but the group was falling apart. Mm. And so I had moved to Miami. Okay. And so I, I wasn't living in Jersey no more. I moved to Miami. I was living in Florida. And um I, I came I was in I came up to New York to work on the album because mm. we were working on the album in New York. And then um I ended up running back into my boy uh Andre Harris, who was Used to be signed to Jazzy Jeff. He was a producer. Dre and Vidal. Oh, okay. they, yeah, Dre and Vidal. They've done Chris Brown, uh, 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 Sierra, Ludacris. I mean, Dre did a Butterfly for Michael Jackson, um, Flowetry. I mean, you name it. Grammy Award winning A list producers. And so, Dre, we had lost contact. Once I left Jazzy Jeff's camp and went and started rocking with White me and me and Dre and Vidal, and like a lot, I, that, we, we lost contact. Mm -hmm. So, you know, fast forward, however many years later, City High did their thing, and then City High started fizzling out, and me and Dre ran into each other, and um, he was like, yo, like, we be connected, and he was just like, yo, we need to we need to work, man. He was like, come come to, come to Philly. He was like, I just got a new crib on, on what was it, like, 23rd and Walnut, fly against <laughs> the loft shit. Right, he was, right. Like, he was like, yo, he was like, come stay at my crib. I got a studio. Got this wow. class apartment. He was like, just come post up. Let's get busy like we used to. So I was like, all right, bet. So um, I, I left New York and went down there and, and kicked it with him for the weekend. And the first song we ended up doing uh, was uh, Superstar that ended up going on Usher's Confessions album. That was the first Ooh. idea we came up with. Went so, so wow. <laughs> Wow, Usher's if y'all y'all know still, hold on, let me. Ah, yeah. that's you. That's you and me. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So that was yeah. the first. So, bro. All right, so tell me about that process, man. Wow, because that's it was just. I mean, the process. It, it, yeah, go ahead. I'm listening. No, I was just saying that's my personal favorite song on the Confession album. So yeah. tell me about that process. And it was real simple. Like I came in the crib. He showed me the new crib. He showed me the studio. <laughs> Work. I put my bags upstairs in the, in, the, in the guest loft, and I came back down into the studio. I think we might have pulled up a drink, rolled up a blunt or something, and uh, he started going through some sounds on his on his keyboard. He had these sample, he had different samples, mm. he playing these different samples. You know, bang bang bang, 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 bang. Mm -hmm. and he played it. And I was like, then he went to another sound. I said, No, hold on, hold on, what's that one? He was like, oh, that's that. He's like, that's Willie Hutch. I said, play that again. And then he was like, nah, I got some other sounds, though. I'm going to show you something. I was like, nah, nigga, we got to go with that one. Mm -hmm. He was like, yeah. He was like, you like that one? I was like, yeah, bro. I was like, loop that up, bro. And he, mm -hmm. so he chopped the beat up, made it real quick. And then he was like, yo, he said, he said, I got a microphone and like a little, this little, it was like a, back then they had these digital recorders. This is almost like kind of before Pro Tools a little bit. So okay. this was like this little eight track digital recorder. <laughs> Took it back. He was like, yo, I got, he said, I got this little digital eight track digital recorder. 
in a microphone set up upstairs, like in the guest loft. He was like, mm -hmm. you can take this up there, start writing to that. He said, I'm going to finish the beat and I'm going to start working on another idea. So I'm like, all right, you know how, that's how it would normally be. We work on like three, four, five, six ideas in a night. But that was the first idea. And I went upstairs and, oh, Thank you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> See, that, that's how I was supposed to sound, y'all. That's how I was supposed to sound. <laughs> yo, yo, that's yeah. amazing, yep. bro. And after we was done, I, I finished the, I finished the song, and then um, I played it for him. He was like, yo, this shit fire. He was like, yo, I think this would be dope for Usher. I was like, where? He's like, yeah. He said, we got a plug with uh, uh, L.A. Reed. L.A. Reed been fucking with us real heavy. I said, yeah. He was like, yeah, so... um. You know, we hung out that weekend. We party. We made music, and then, um, then I left. I went back to New York to go mm. back working on the on the on the City High album. And um, about two weeks later, I think something like that, Drake hit me. It was like he hit me on the Motorola, the two way page. <laughs> <laughs> All these throwbacks. It's throwback this throwback. This, this is all throwbacks. And so yeah, he hit me on the Motorola. <laughs> he was like. He was like, yo, L.A. Reid loved the song. He want to send, he want to fly us to Atlanta to go recording on Usher. Bless so him. I was like, I was like, all right. And then we all, we flew, me, him, Dow, his production partner. Um, we flew out there and uh, the homie Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear, who writes all, all the Justin Bieber stuff now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pooh Bear, Pooh Bear was there too. And that's so, how, and me and Pooh Bear started writing together. That was when we started writing together. Yeah, and I was about to say, is that how you got, um, as far as connected with Justin Bieber? Because, dude, you're, you're like, Opulates or whatever you want to list, you have wrote some amazing songs to some amazing people, and it's not just like you know. And, and it's not that I love all credit. Uh, I you know give everyone their credits, you know. But you know how some songwriters, you know, they write a bunch of songs that you know haven't really gotten play or streams. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, you got. So <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Caught up. Then do, do you have a oh, what else you uh, control myself LL like do you have a favorite mm -hmm. song that you've written and also a favorite studio session? Um, favorite song, and that could be for you or anyone else. Yeah, no, nah, I don't. I'm still trying to write my favorite song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. I'm still trying to write my favorite song. I, I don't. I don't have a song that I'm like, oh my god. This is my favorite song out of any song I ever wrote because I'm always I'm still trying to write that. Um, but um, as far as my favorite session, I think one of my most favorite sessions was with Lionel Richie. I mean, just because he's Lionel, he's a legend. Lionel Richie. Like he flew me, he flew me out to LA to work with him. This was like in '05, and and I worked with him at his crib, and his crib was just it was just like yo, you really looking at royalty, nigga. Like royalty, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, and it was just an amazing experience just to be around him and to hear his stories. And he tell mm -hmm. like, you think I got cool stories? Like, he telling stories about how Prince came over one night and how this person, how Michael Jackson was like the young boy at the label. Like, Michael was the little nigga. Like, <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, and like Lionel talked to you like one of your uncles. Like, yeah, man, right. this little nigga. So this nigga gonna tell me, <laughs> <laughs> tell him, nigga. No, man, I'm Lionel Richie, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that old, that old cat swag. I that mean, old... but but with bread beyond bread, nigga. Yo, so... yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so man. like I'm standing outside in his backyard, you know, by the pool, and he telling me all these stories. He giving me the tour of the crib. He like, yeah, you see all them lights, you hear all that music over there. Yeah, that's the Playboy Mansion. That's Hef's crib right over there. <laughs> like. His backyard and the Playboy Mansion backyard is across from each other across the golf course. I'm just like, where am I right now? Like, right, like, how do you respond to that? Like, Yo, uh, I ain't even gonna hold you, bro. I cried that night. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I let it go. I let it go. I I, I was like, you're, you're who I want to be. Like, nigga, I'm looking at, like, you talking about songwriters? You talking about... Grammys, you talking about American Music Awards, like bro, like his his in his office, we go sit in his office and like, I mean, from ceiling to floors, just Grammys, Grammys, American Music Awards, <laughs> Billboard Awards, just like 
It was mind blowing, bro. So I'm and, and this man, he he just chilling, you know, on the couch, he talking. We got, you know what I mean, drinking like fifteen hundred dollar bottles of wine and whatnot. <laughs> Living the life. My mind was so blown, I I I cried. <laughs> <laughs> I never told nobody that either, yo. I swear to God, <laughs> I never told nobody that, bro. I, I could, I could, I just said I was like, oh my God, like this man is my future. You, you're me. You're who I want to be in the future. Like, so it was just such an honor to be even in the presence of somebody like that. That it just, woo, brought it out of me that night, boy. I had to, I had to go. To, excuse me, Mr. Rich, Rich, so bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it's like, man, that's, it's like, I right, listen, I'm going to give you a pass for the tears because you got to see, <laughs> you got to really face your dream. Yeah, you bro. You see it, dog, and it's like, yeah. and that, and, and, and this is going to take me, uh, this question just popped up, and real quick, shout out to Tiffany D, um, number one mm -hmm. media personality in, in Pennsylvania, my partner, and she yeah. asked Denzel Washington this question, and I love the question. She interviewed him and asked, and now I'm asking you, what is the greatest piece of advice that you've received? Man, um, I mean, I would have to say Jazzy Jeff was one of the first. And Jeff, Jeff, Jeff said, you know, he said, you're a songwriter. He was like, you're a writer, right? He was like, you're going to make more songs. You know what I mean? He was like, don't hold, basically, like, don't hold anything you mm. know what i'm saying I, I remember i was at jeff's uh retreat in 2018 in the summer stayed at his crib <clears throat> at his big retreat that he has his music conference retreat he has every summer and um i remember when we were leaving we stayed there for like four days and uh i remember when we was leaving i'm like all right og appreciate you big bro da, 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 you know and i hadn't seen jeff in years and we had, you know, we connected and he had invited me out to this conference. And I remember leaving and he was just like, hey, man, he said, put the music out. Like, release mm -hmm. the music. Don't sit on it. He told me that then in another, in, you know, kind of like scenario, because he was talking about like with Will Smith. Because mm -hmm. when he played my stuff for Will, I felt some type of way because I'm like, man, those are my songs. You know what I mean? I'm trying to do my deal. Da, 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 da. He like, Ryan, okay, that's cool. But while we trying to get your record deal, don't sit on the music. If somebody right. wants it, get that shit off, bro. Don't sit right. on it. Don't sit on the music. And he he and, and so he was like, he was giving me examples of like, yo, he said, um, uh uh he said, look at Missy Elliott. This was when Missy was kind of new still. He was mm -hmm. like, yo, Missy, he was like, you know the girl, he was like, Missy Elliott, she wrote for Gina Thompson, Total. Little Kim, she was writing for all these people before she popped off as an artist. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So he mm. was like, yo, man, you know, he was like, you want to, same thing. I think uh, Babyface was like writing and playing, producing for so many mm. other people before he popped off as an artist. So um, he, he told me that then. And then it's funny, fast forward to now, I see him 2018. And now he's talking about it from the aspect, uh, from the position of like utilizing the internet. Cause mm -hmm. you know a lot of artists like from my era didn't, didn't know nothing about like yeah, it's, it's putting shit out. And, you know what I'm saying? Just releasing songs and putting it out on the internet and doing it yourself. You know we come from the era of staying in the lane, getting with a record label, get a record deal. These are the right, rules. Right. These are the rules. So you know we would. That was one of the things that they were talking about at the conference. And he was just like, "Yo, release the music. Don't sit on your music. Don't sit on your music." And so that was one of the big, I mean, that advice has fed me for 29 years, fam. So mm. that's one of the biggest pieces of advice. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and, that, and that's dope because that's a great segue to my next question. Um, mm -hmm. Songs for the lockdown. Mm -hmm. Volume yeah, okay. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, what, what, <laughs> what made you yeah. decide to drop, well, April 3rd? You drop volume one. So what made you decide yeah. to just go full out? Like, you know, I'm about to just drop a bunch of music and I'm going to put them on th this platform. They can get it this way. I'm going to keep it coming. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, listening to the advice of my OG, which I just told you, um, and, and it was a few things. It was that. <clears throat> it was 
it was the fact that me finally <laughs> doing the solo artist music shit that I set out <laughs> 29 years ago. Right. <laughs> right. I'm just getting around to it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so so it was like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, can I finally check this off my bucket list before I die? So it, right, it, right. It, it was that, and I'm going to keep it all the way above with you. Top of 2020 was hard. Like, one of my homies got murdered. Wow. Another one of my homies lost his 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 baby mom died in the same week. This happened in the same week, in seven days. Kobe Bryant died all in the same week. So that's how I started 2020. Mm -hmm. So then Corona came. So it was like all these signs of like, yo, life is short. Don't sit on the music. Mm -hmm. Life is too short, bro. You cannot sit on the music. So it was those three things. And then the fourth reason was like, yo, we really about to be on lockdown. People really about to be stuck in the house right now on their phone <clears throat> with not? nothing to do but stream <laughs> new music. Right, right. Duh. <laughs> you know Eureka. The light you. Right. <laughs> Eureka. Eureka. <laughs> Eureka, get your ass in this house. Eureka. <laughs> You better close my screen door, you right, right. Let's get it. Oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, so, 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 yeah, man, all those four things, bro, just, like, lit a fire under my ass. And I just was like, I wanted to just go hard, man. I wanted to go hard. I wanted to, um, I wanted to just express myself. I, I mean, you got to think I got a whole career's worth of music catalog, you know what I mean? Plus, I'm writing new songs every day. I wanted right. to get it out, man. And um, and also, too, I wanted to, I just wanted to be a blessing to the people, man. Like, you know, niggas was going through it, man. Stuck in the yeah, house. Right. Some people were sick. Um, I had, I had later on in, 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 in into 2020, I had a dear, dear, dear uh, family friend. He died, you know, from complications with corona. So it was like, I had my friends and my family. People was going through it, man. I had cousins that had got sick and was fucked up for two, three weeks thinking they about to die. You know what mm. I mean? So <clears throat> I just went, and they was calling me like, cuz, your songs is what's getting me through right now. Your mm. music is what's getting me through right now. So when I had a couple of my homies go tell me that and family members tell me that, I said, I, I just, this is what I have to do, right? Your gift right. is meant to be given, bro. Get right. that shit out, man. Do your thing. Like, you know what I mean? So that's really what it was, man. And, 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 I just went crazy with it. I'm a, I'm a bit obsessive. When, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing something, I'm doing it, doing it, doing it. Right, right. You know what I mean? So, right. <laughs> I'm about to say, like, we see that. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we see that. Like, you dropped, I believe, what you got is volume eight. Was there ten. a nine? Oh, you ten. got ten. All right. So, I see, I got to okay. finish ten. doing, I got to finish getting right. I did, I, did right. Ten, ten, I did ten albums in ten weeks. Wow. So, a week, an album a week. Yeah. I, I, wanted to do so, I wanted to do something like that I can no really hang my hat on and be like, yo, I did that. You know what I mean? I want. I wanted to do something that was like um, pretty unprecedented. I wanted to show my kids, like, yo, man, you have to be committed to this music. It, uh, like, not to whatever you're doing, you have to be committed. And right. so, like, even with you know, on my grant, on my gram, on my Facebook and stuff, like with my fitness and all of that, I just wanted, you know, I, I'm older now too. So you know, when you start getting older, you start being like, yo. Yo, what's really going on? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just heard 28. I'm just... sweating a little bit, man. It's getting real. That's why I got friends. You just came out of nowhere. <laughs> you know how life is every 10 years? You be like, yo, like, what's really going on? Like, what am I doing with my life? You start questioning things, you know what I mean? And uh, so, yeah, man, I just, you know, I, I just decided I wanted to just go hard. I want to flourish in my 40s. You know, like a lot of people... We, we give up, we fall off in our 40s. We feel like we old. We feel like our best years are behind us. We feel like, you know, our best years was in our 20s. And if we didn't kill it in our 20s, then now nah, it's too late. And I just want to be, I want to be the nigga that's like, nah, it ain't never too late. Fuck that. I'm still fly. I'm still fit. I'm oh, still happy. You know what I'm happy saying? Happy you said that. Happy you said that. <laughs> because that go right into that Golden Knights video. Yeah. That was like a retro groovy <laughs> yeah. type. But it was a good feeling song, Thank you. bro. Thank you, and it's like, Thank you. you know, one, oh, no problem, man. And um, right now I do have two takeover picks as far as uh for the for the projects, and I still gotta listen to some more. So this is just real quick. Um, Golden Knights, ironically, is the two with the videos. I was trying to not, yeah. but Golden Knights, 
and on. But one that really got to me, and, and, and especially, you know, after everything you were just saying, how you started your 2020 was six feet. Yeah. Because you 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 mix the bars with yeah. the relevancy yeah. in, in that track, bro. And yeah, thank you. No, no problem. And I just want to know, uh, and like, obviously, you know, six feet, social distancing. But I want to dig deeper into, you know, that song as far as your mindset and, and and writing that song, you know, you spoke on family, kids, uh, mm -hmm. the world, mm -hmm. politics, everything. So mm -hmm. just where were you at writing that song, man? Right there where you just said, I was right in the middle of it, like we all were, you know, sitting on the couch, feeling stuck, feeling scared, not knowing what's going on, can't, can't really get with your family. Some people, you know, can't really get with their families. People was losing people, people was dying. It just got really real. It got scary, man. Shit got Bad. real. You know what I mean? Like people like wilding out in the in the in the, in the Trader Joe's and in the Target, like for toilet tissue. Like what the fuck? What what's happening right now? You right. can't find no 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 wipes and shit. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Niggas is like trying to like you gotta come home and steam your face and like <laughs> take the, right in the shower. Elder, like like like, like nigga just drinking <laughs> elderberry straight out the. the <laughs> drinking the echinacea oh, and elderberry. It was real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, this gotta be one of the top five funniest interviews, bro. <laughs> like, yo, niggas, cool. yo, we was ODing on the vitamin C. Like, niggas is just popping them joints. Like, like, sunflower seeds, bro. Yo, I went so, to I went to CVS and got like four things of vitamins. Like, nope, they ain't getting me all gummies. I got some kids, got some. <laughs> I was just I was I was just really I was just really in the middle of, of dealing with all of that and just you know certain personal things, family, kids, like you know what I mean. My little daughter 21 now, so we going through that thing, you know what I'm saying? And it's just I was like, man, I'm gonna just put this shit in the music, put it in a song, you know what I mean? It's, People it's need therapy for me. And, and not yeah. only therapy for you, it's like people need to hear that because it's like you mm. never know what other people are going through. And I yeah. feel like you know, a lot of times people shy away from putting their message out or, or putting something yeah. out because they yeah. feel like, well, I don't know how people are going to look at me. When yeah. whole time, you know, regardless if nine people looking bad at you, I'll take as one person. That, that post could have changed that one person's life. And you never know what could come for that, man. Absolutely. You got to You have to be vulnerable i mean like we were talking about earlier this is the era we live in where it's like you know back in the day everything was hidden we didn't know mm -hmm. we didn't know whitney was getting high we didn't know <laughs> you know what i'm saying right though we, right we ain't know we ain't know you know what i mean uh, uh uh mariah carey was low key off the chain we ain't know you know what i'm saying Motherfucking ray charles was getting hot till the movie came out <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey. Oh shit, bro! Ray, hey, these biopics, the new generation biopics, yeah. is changing the game. <laughs> you feel me? So it's like you know, yeah, like we didn't know, we didn't know, you know, everything was hidden back in the day. You know, everything was behind closed doors. But now we just live in a time where you, you know, gotta be more open, more transparent, more vulnerable. So I'm just, you know, I figured I'll just start uh, expressing myself and being transparent brother being naked like you have to these days because like you said you never know what somebody's going through we all dealing with the same shit bills taxes kids love divorce heartbreak death you know what i'm saying right. unemployed we all dealing with it all of us got a cousin smoking drugs all of us got some family member in and out of jail for the most right. part all of us got some family member in an abusive relationship all of us got teenagers that we may or may not get along with like mm -hmm. it is what it is bro right though right it awesome. is what it is. look mm -hmm. man we got we, i can't hold you up too much longer they're gonna cut us off soon but um, yeah, yeah. No, okay first i want to say bro i appreciate you for you know taking the like time out to do this interview uh, awesome. giving us some amazing insight i definitely hope to stay connected i still want them backstage passes i don't care if it's 20 2020 2014 20, <laughs> i mean 2025 20, whatever but, absolutely absolutely so, and with that being said, you know, I just want to know what what what's next for you. Um, right now, right now, I am gearing up to. So, you know, I put out the lockdown series. <clears throat> um, and if you haven't already, please make sure you go stream songs for the lockdown volumes one through ten. Um, my homie, my homie said he he went to Vegas a couple weeks ago, 
and he didn't even realize he had press play on, on song number one. He said, nigga, it was just shit playing all the way to Vegas. Four hours from from, from LA to, to Vegas. I said, I said, well, did it get you? Did it get you through the trip? Did it get you to Vegas? He said, nigga, you got nigga, we was jamming the whole I said, if he ain't turn it off, he ain't got him. <laughs> he said it was all Ryan told me for like three and a half hours. That's <laughs> bro. Uh. So like, you know what I mean? That was a that was a blessing. Make sure you go do that. But yeah, um, so I did that. Uh, that was basically like 80 songs, 80 put out 80 records in two months. So I, I wanted to, you know, enjoy my summer and re up. And now I'm about to come back with another just set of albums. I have like four new albums that, that are done and ready to go. Um, and I'm working on a Christmas album right now, too. Okay, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm in my bag. <laughs> so, and we need that Christmas album because honestly, when's yeah. the last time you know we've gotten a real pure. And I know yeah. you're gonna come with the switch up, but yeah. your, your voice is one of a kind, and and we oh, need you. that to listen. I'm you no, know, I love boys to men, but yeah. I need something different than a let us know this yeah, year. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yo, all right. I'm sorry. I do got one question because this I feel like is very important for songwriters. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the importance of getting a publishing deal for songwriters, and how should they go about that? Um, you don't have to get a publishing deal. That now, there, so, is, there is no importance. You don't have to? No. A publishing, deal, a publishing deal is very, very, very overrated. It's very mm. overrated. I can give you a publishing deal. Mm. I could be like, hey, nigga, I got $10,000 for you, and I'm going to own like a piece of every song you do for the next uh, three, four, five years. Mm. Every song you do within the next however long the deal is, I get uh -huh. a piece of that. But it's $10,000. You want that? And then I'm going to eat off your record. Forever. Forever. Mm. That sound fun to you? Mm. <laughs> Happy I'm not in that industry. Exactly. <laughs> no, but I, I just feel like it's a lot of uh, misconceptions with the, the publishing bills and the bills every day. So that's one thing, you know, specifically I definitely wanted to ask because I was talking to an uh, artist about that earlier and I'm just happy you gave that insight. Yeah, it's, it's, it's overrated. It's overrated. I mean, it, it's cool in the sense of having someone because publishing companies do collect your money they're able to they have a reach all around the world to be able to monitor uh, uh monitor where your songs are being played to be able to mm. collect your money but there's other companies you could pay a, a, an administrative company and do an administrative deal with a company and give them way less of a percentage to do the same job so don't be gassed by the publishing company thing that shit is like hype mm. hey that's Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. Listen, man. I just want to say one more time: the legend, Thank you, man. the creator, the, the cr content creator, producer, songwriter, actor, <laughs> singer. He do it all. Make sure y'all grab songs for the lockdown right now. Yes. One through ten. This is Boys Real Takeover with the one and only Ryan Smokey. I appreciate. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're not about to flex on me and the like that. I gotta look at your page and see you taking your photo. What are you doing? <laughs> no. Oh, hey, I'll turn that shit up too. I'm about to turn it up. I'm about to like really launch into like a whole nother world as far as like with that fitness. I was just doing it just for me, just to stay in shape and all of that. But like, bro, it. I'm I'm about to really get into like a whole nother like. So don't be on the lookout too. I'm I'm still putting it together and see how I'm gonna do it. But don't be surprised if you see me on my real motherfucking Billy Blanks Tybo like Ryan Toby <laughs> fitness thing <laughs> class. That's hey, not. people, it's hey, too much. Hey, I'll be let's right there with you. Let's go. Yeah. Impress. 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 I'm about hey, to man. get in that fitness bag. I'm about to turn this shit all the way up. Hey, yo, you got our full support, brother. We appreciate you. They about to log yeah. us off, man. Thank Look, you. thank you all for right, everything. Kim. Support this brother. No. The fitness, the music. Willa Burrow, Jersey, what's the bit? This is the boy Lido Takeover. If you ain't following us now, Lido Takeover, the Takeover Files is the number one media outlet in the world, Craig. All right, Kim.